Welcome to Town Meeting Television. I'm here today with Nancy Stetson of the Burlington's new BTV Data Hub. Um, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us who you are? Sure. Hi, I'm Nancy Stetson. I am the Senior Policy and Data Analyst for the City of Burlington. I work out of the Department of City Planning. Great. How did, why, what brought you to this work? To the work of the BTV Stat Data Hub? Yeah, or to the work of being a policy data okay, analyst. That's a, that's yeah. a longer story. Um, well, I, um, I grew up in Vermont and I moved back here after graduate school and started working actually at the police department as their data analyst. Um, and during the pandemic, there was a, 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 people moved around the city and I was moved actually into IT and then into planning. Um, so that's sort of my, my history at the city. Yeah, and what brought you to the work of doing data? I mean, it's, it's a particular um, love, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I've always been interested in government and how government works and, but also had this sort of background in math and I feel like um, looking at data, uh, often in government, data is underused, and it um, it brings um, clarity to a lot of that work, um, and so that's sort of what brought me to it. So the term data is thrown around a lot to mean a lot of things, and I wonder if there's a succinct definition or how you're using the word data um, when we're talking about um, the city data? Yeah, that's an interesting question. I'm sure there is one specific definition that I don't have on the tip of my tongue. Um, but I would say it's, uh, data is really just information. But it's information aggregated up to a point where uh, you you can use it to understand things on a, on a broad level. Um, so it's, it's not a singular piece of information. It's multiple pieces of information you can compare yes. towards an end. Yeah. Right, yeah. So tell us a little bit about the BTV data set. The data, tell me what the name yes. of the project is, yeah. Yeah, so the, the project is the BTV Stat Data Hub. Uh, BTV Stat is its own program. Um, it's a performance evaluation program that is, uh, is, a, is a regular meeting of department heads to go over specific data around city operations. Um, so BTV Stat is, is that program. The Data Hub has sort of grown out of that program to capture a lot of the data that um, we are looking at within the city and put it online in, a, in a, an accessible way. What we want to be able to do is have people be able to go on the site and um, just learn things about the city, learn about their community um, in, a, in an easy way. Um. So we'll get a little bit more into the project and mm -hmm. you know look at the website, um, but I'm just curious what's the what's the overall? I hear you about the the goal is to allow people to have access, but is there sort of a mission behind this? Is there do you have a, a like kind of an underlying um, drive, driven driven mission to provide this data? Um, the city strives to be transparent. I would say that transparency is the, the central mission there of putting out information so people know what what's happening at the city. Okay. So, um, and how long has this project been in the works? This version of the open data site has been in the works since last fall, um, but prior to that there were other iterations of open data sites. Um, the last version, unfortunately, was launched in January 2020, and so it never, the pandemic, you know, threw everything up in the air, and it never qu quite um, got to the point that we wanted it to be at, so we we took it back to the beginning and sort of restarted last fall. Yeah. I mean, there's, at some point, somebody decided to start collecting data and information, and we have census data, we have other pieces of information, um, data sets, mm -hmm. and then there was a decision to make those open. And mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you have any sense of that history of why, when did somebody decide it's important to share this and not just hold it in the hands of uh, a few folks? I think there was a, a sort of wider movement towards open data, um, you know, in the early 2010s and before that uh, across um, across the country, and so Burlington was a part of that. Their, their very first open data portal was in 2014. Um, and so I, I think it was a wider movement um, to promote transparency in government. Um, 
and I, I think it was born out of sort of knowing that the city has so much data and is collecting all that data um, and making sure it's, it's used um, as, as well as possible because it is useful to other people beyond just city operations. Yeah, so maybe it's, let's get a little bit into what the data is sure. that's being collected and what the data sets are. So we'll just take a look at this. Now I think we're at the website. Um, so if we're here at the BTV, oh, B BTV Stat Data Hub, mm -hmm. um, where, what, how do I start? Well, so one goal of this data hub is to make, there, while there are you know, data sets you can get to, we want to make sure that there is information that people can get, even if they're not data analysts. Um, so we have these five sections, four that are currently in the works. Um, and these each have their own uh, sort of visuals that you can look at that summarize that data. So we could, we could start maybe, oh, and then, yeah, so there's the five main sections, and then there's a few standalone visuals. Um, so I would start with one of the main sections, maybe the housing section. Um, so if you click into housing, you can see um, a bunch of different ways we're trying to collect information and um, visualize it for people out in the city about um, what's happening in Burlington. So this first dashboard shows how many units of housing have been built in the city. Um, on this dashboard, you can see both the number of units built each year. You can also see where those units are built. Um, so all of these dashboards, yes, they have uh, different filters. You can change around. You can see um, what is, you can yeah, widen it up. You can also look on the map. You can hover over and see where the projects are and how many units they are. So you can see there's Cambrian Rise with 70 units. Um, and you can add in other years as, as you'd like. So that's a, some sort of individual project. An individual, it's like a single home being built? Yeah, or, or possibly a, an ADU. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if, um, so where is this data coming from? So it depends on what we're looking at. The unit data is coming from our permitting system, um, which includes both an ancient permitting system, pulling information out of that, and, and we're trying to keep it current. So you know, once a month I look to see if there's been new units built. Um, and then the dashboard we're looking at now is, is pulling in um, census data from the uh, American Community Survey looking at overall in Burlington, some, some statistics comparing to other cities in the country. And if, you know, again, if I'm not a data analyst, mm -hmm. how do I compare these sets of data? I mean, are these comparable sets of data, new housing units and renters and owners, in terms of time scale? Of, I mean, I guess, how do, how do you manage to make sure that the data sets can inter interact with one another? I would say each of these dashboards are showing sort of their own their their own complete um, look into a certain into a certain uh, subject. So housing units all come from one data set and they're comparable within each other. The census data it, is not directly connected to that data, and this is looking at more of you know a, a it's a survey of households. Um, so what what these dashboards are trying to do in total, I think there's six altogether, is to paint a picture of what um, what the housing market, what housing is like in Burlington. And these are the dashboards that you're referring to, this public uh, safety or? I meant the six, there's actually, I think, six dashboards within the housing section. Uh, I see, I see, I see. I think we missed that. Oh, I see, the new housing units, renters oh, five, and owners, housing costs rental housing quality, homelessness, and additional data. Um, so how do you have any sense yet? I know that the site is relatively new. Mm -hmm. Do you have any sense yet? Or are you going to be, have a, be able to have a sense of who's using this data and for what purposes? We haven't taken a deep dive on that yet. Um, we do have some like Google Analytics like tracking of how many people are using it, um, which I haven't looked at that closely. Um, I don't know. We don't know who is downloading the data. Like we don't yeah. get. Um, so I'm not sure. I know with our previous version of the data site, um, 
there were a lot of uh, like college projects. So people would download, we um, download the police data and do sort of like data projects, you know, um, like classes from Champlain would use that. So I, I sort of heard about that through the grapevine, but um, we don't have a great sense of where, where the data is used. Yeah. And I didn't mean to shrug my shoulders. It's yeah. not, I, you know, it's not necessarily assumed that when you come to this site that you're not being tracked and, and that there's not privacy. But what you're saying is you don't track people individually who use this site. No, no. Um, Though we would, we would love to hear about projects. If, if you did use the data, yeah. you know, it'd be, it'd be great to hear about I mean, what I, they were used for. I mean, I'm kind of curious about, so, you know, part of the whole, the, the transparency and open data has this, you know, very valuable side of allowing citizens to make decisions, mm -hmm. understand how government works, mm -hmm. journalists, students, et cetera. And on the other side, you have sort of the big data companies who want to mine and collect as much data as they can. Mm -hmm. And now we have a pile of open data sets. And I'm, I'm curious if there's tension or awareness of that in, you know, are there any issues with being, a, being providing all of this data to not just the public, but anyone else who wants to use it? Um, I mean, we, I would say the, the main tension is uh, around like privacy data. Um, so we would wanna be sure that we're not publishing names. Um, but most of this data in a lot of ways is actually already out on the internet already. Like for example, the permitting data, you can already look up people's who you know who has been pulling permits, um, you know who has has been building new houses. Like you, you can see that information already. This is just aggregating it in one place, so it's easier to use. We I haven't heard specifically about um, people aggregating it sort of in a wider in a in a bigger way. Um, I'm not I'm not sure sort of what they would use that for. Why why somebody would want to be able yeah. to? I I have seen um, the crime data. Uh, some I think sometimes it gets pulled up into sort of wider sites that are using it to track crime. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, I guess that brings me to the question of how is who's paying attention to that question of um, how the data is being collected, how the data is being entered. Is it accurate? Is it the right data to be shared publicly? Yeah, I would say that the, on the collecting side, the, the data the, and, um, that we pull comes from a, a bunch of different places and it's sort of on the department level. Um, accuracy um, is something that I would check and that's something that I would say there's always gonna be small issues, but that's something we sort of review as the data comes in um, to get a sense of. Um, does that answer your question? Sure. I mean, I think back to the, I mean, the thing with, you know, when, when folks say, well, this data is all publicly available already, right? Your phone number's mm -hmm. in the phone book. Um, and so, you know, why would you care? And then you think, well, except my phone number's in a phone book that's in a particular home in a particular community. Mm. And it's very different than having that phone number available across geographic lines, you know, say you're somebody who's um, running from somebody in domestic, you know, you're in a domestic violence situation and you didn't mind, you know, in the 1980s having your phone number published sure. in your local phone book, but it becomes very different when their, your phone number is published yeah. across the country. Your, your building up information is in a local planning commission, mm -hmm. but it becomes different when that information is publicly accessible and searchable again across. So, you know, it, I think there are, there are issues there that I'm curious about if there's a governance structure, if there's a way that Burlington is addressing and thinking about what data are we providing? Mm -hmm. How are we providing it? And, and is, it, um, is it the right data? Yeah, we do have an open data policy that that covers sort of how you should think about what data is published, and we and we are sensitive to publishing individually identifiable data. Um, I would say the the housing unit data is the one that sort of is is on the narrowest um, like geographic location, but we we're not publishing, definitely not publishing phone numbers. Um, 
and most of it is on sort of a, a bigger lens. Yeah. Um, so if the information, so I'm assuming there's something in here about, um, well, I don't know. Is there, how do, is BED, is the data that BED collects around um, energy usage part of this data set? No. Okay. No. Why, why or why not? Why would they not be included in open data sets? Um, we haven't, we haven't gotten there yet. I, I, it's, it's not automatic to publish some open data, you know, because it does need to be checked for privacy and accuracy. Um, I personally, like, I think it would be interesting to look at energy use across the city, but it definitely is not something we, we would publish online at an address level um, anytime. <laughs> I, I do not see that happening. Um, so it's, it's not something we've gotten to. I think it could be interesting to see, but each data set sort of, it, it takes time to publish and to get, the, to get it set up so it can be updated regularly. Great. Um, when you talk about the transparency and the um, folks who are able to use this data, can you give some other, could you give an example maybe of how, I mean, you mentioned the students, but could you give another example of how somebody might be using some of this data for? Sure. I mean, I, the other um, dashboard I, we could look at is the police dashboard. I mean, that has a ton of information. The police department is publishing data every single month, so it should be updated all the way through June. Um, and this is this is an area where um, I, I think it serves two purposes. I think it serves a transparency focus. It also um, it, it serves like sort of a a grounding about what is happening at the city. Um, so, for example, if you were concerned about your car getting stolen, you could see where all the cars have gone stolen in Burlington. Over the this is over the past month, but you can change the filter so you can look at the past year. Um, there's other pages of this dashboard where you can look at sort of trends over time and see whether um, cars are getting stolen in your area. So, so, so this provides both transparency, um, but also it can be a useful tool for someone who is concerned about what's happening in their neighborhood. Um, well, this is a good example of um you know, how data is collected and the, the conversations around, oh, you know, you can make data, um, say whatever you want, tell whatever story you want. Um, and I'm wondering if, you know, we think of data as just these information sets that have no value behind them. Mm -hmm. And yet, what you choose to pay attention to, right? We've, we've learned that um, and I, I may or may not be completely accurate here, but is there a point that the Burlington Police Department did start um, including racial data with something like traffic stops? And then, you know, to what degree do you rely on that racial data? Are you asking somebody in a car, how would you like to identify when I fill out this traffic ticket? Uh, so, um Traffic tickets are governed by actually a state law, so the way the police department collects racial data is, is specifically governed by this sort of law. The police department did actually start collecting racial data before the state required it, um, but the, the way the state asks police officers to record race at traffic stops is based on the officer's perception of the person's race, and that is because the point of that data collection is to understand whether police officers are treating people differently based on how they perceive them to be. Um, so that that's a sort of like narrow case of how that data collection works. Um, yeah. But it seems yeah. like very important, right? Because if somebody says, well, I perceive that person to be white, but the person doesn't think of themselves as white and has a different perception, right? You have that, it is interesting to think of that data set as can be value driven yeah, um, and y yes, and that, that has come up in the past. Um, again, because that data field is, the perceived race is, is specifically trying to measure yeah. how officers are viewing um, here. And the other way you can see that is up at the top. You can look through tabs. Um, so there is a bit on traffic stops. Oh, did that go to the wrong one? Here, try. 
There we go. Um, so this is the dashboard that looks at traffic stops. Oh, it seems like the map maybe is not working. Um, but you can look at both overall trends over time, and then on the top left, you can filter for um, race or years or why someone was pulled over. Um, so let's just do an example of that. So let's say 2016. Search, select on those search, and this is built on GIS. Is this ArcGIS? Uh, this is not. So the website itself is built, built on ArcGIS. This the dashboards are called. Uh, it's a program called Power BI. So all, so this is just all the traffic stops in 2016, mm -hmm. and um, if I were to look at this, I go 4,000. White, four hundred and sixty-six black, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Two hundred and two thousand male, seventeen hundred female, um, and then what? What would I do with that information? What do you think? What? How are the different ways that you might somebody might interpret that information? I think it depends on what they're looking for. I mean, one. I think one way to look at this information is to look at the trend over time. So right now you're just looking at one year, but 2016 had some of the most traffic stops that have been done in the city. What it says, 5,000, 6,000. Um, whereas in the past year there were maybe 500 traffic stops. Um, so you can see sort of what areas the police department are um, focusing on, and that they don't, you know, policy has changed so that traffic stops is not a, a major part of their work at this point. Well, it says here there's, oh, I see, I, I've included, I'm aggregating data by cl continuing to click. Mm -hmm. um, so it's interesting that you come to the conclusion that, that the policy has changed. Maybe policy is the wrong word, but their, their focus has changed. Their focus has changed. So. You, you may know that because of your understanding and your relationship uh, to someone who's been working inside the police department, mm -hmm. but it, that would be a huge leap to make to just read those two data sets and say, you just say, oh, well, there was 4,800 and now there's, you know, it could be, oh my God, the people are really behaving well. Sure. There's no, wow, people are, I, people that did not occur really to me, but. Be, um, have curbed their... Um, There's no more traffic violations in yeah. Burlington anymore. I mean, which is important. I mean, uh, the mayor of New York, right, um, and yeah, decided um, they were going to have a zero um, bike fatalities, mm -hmm. right? And so mm -hmm. that's, a da that's a data, that, that's a set, mm -hmm. and the, how, the, how the city wanted to use that. We want to have nobody dying on a bike, mm -hmm. right? And so there are a lot of different ways you could achieve that. And then and measure it. Mm -hmm. How is the city using this data, as far as you know, or how are there plans? Have you heard from other department heads how they might use this to make changes? Um, yes, I can answer that. I just wanted to go back to the idea of like no traffic violations because yeah. the other thing that this holds is how many traffic crashes the police responded to. And so if you look. Um, on the trends tab, so up at the top again. I got, All right, this great, got thanks. like zoomed in a little bit. I did. Um, yeah. But so if you click on trends, you can you can filter. This is all um, incidents right now, but you can filter out and see that while traffic um, uh, enforcement has gone down, crashes are relatively stable. They haven't they haven't increased a ton. Um, so the way to do this is um, on type of call. So actually over where you were before. There was, oh, okay. Um, you, if you click select all, it'll unselect everything. Mm -hmm. And then um, you can look down in, I think it's motor vehicle. Oh yeah, it's already open. So you can you can just, yeah. Those show all, all types, um, but you can filter in to just crashes too. So this tells you that these are all here. Um, so you could, you, could, you could spend some time looking at this and you could say 2016, there were 4,800 traffic stops, mm -hmm. and there were less crashes, or there were more crashes, or they were, right? Yeah. And then in 
2022, there are 400 traffic stops, and yeah. we could figure yeah. out, did that affect crashes? Yeah. But anyways, your question was about how the city uses this data. Yeah. Um, and the police data is used pretty constantly, you know, both for traffic crashes. There's also um, an annual report that comes out once a year looking at racial disparities in uh, policing in Burlington. So that will be coming out in a couple months. Um, and that uses a lot of this police-related data, um, both for traffic stops, but also looking at arrests and use of force. Um, I just have, so the other piece of this was, I noticed the racial equity data coming soon. Yes. That seems like a big, um, big question mark, especially given the city's call that um, racial, um, you know, that we're in a pandemic mm -hmm. in, I think in 2021, they, they called a public health emergency, public health emergency yes. around racial injustice. And so talk a little bit about that. I, there, there's not much to talk about yet because I, what we um, are working on and need to work with the uh, racial, uh, the REIB director on who um, is relatively new is, is what should go in there. And I think that's still an open question of, of what data should we be collecting, what data should we be looking at to understand that problem better. And that's, we, we haven't filled out that section yet, um, but we are planning to. So that be that gets down to again that governance, the mm -hmm. question of mm -hmm. like how is this, who's deciding where this data is collected, and then who's maintaining the data, who's making sure that people are filling it in. Yeah, I mean, and that might be more of, you know, probably for the likely for that section we might be using census data, which then is already collected, and we just have to pull it together. But I think the 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 question for that section is, what should we? Be highlighting what should we be yeah. looking at so there's in in many of these cases obviously like traffic stops or the permitting there are data sets that already exist mm -hmm. that are pretty robust mm -hmm. that are um, quality controlled so to speak mm -hmm. and that are used um, um, fascinating because um there yeah. there are a few um, other these featured visuals are sort of ad hoc um, dashboards that could also be interesting. Um, the wastewater results a lot of people have seen, that's a holdover from the pandemic where we were tracking uh, COVID in the wastewater. And we are actually still tracking that at two wastewater plants. So if you wanna know sort of where the levels are, you can, you can see that there. Yep. Um, the workforce demographics are just looking at um, who's working for the city. Uh, there's a comparison between 2023 and 2019. Um, and that gets a bit into demographics across mm -hmm. the city. Yeah. And then the C click fix. Yes. Data. We'll go back through. We'll go back to that other page here. Did I lose my? It seems like you get lost in this for a while. Yes. There's there's plenty to look at. So C click fix. Um, if you don't know, uh, is an app you can use to report issues, usually with physical infrastructure in the city. You know, potholes or you know, trash on the trash on the green belt, that sort of thing. And so you can use this. This dashboard is just putting a place where you can look through and um, find out what the city's been responding to, what people have been asking the city to respond to, um, and how those have trended over time. And that could be a way of saying. You know, we need more code enforcement. Yeah, possibly. Or if you know, if you have a sense that people are putting out more trash on the green belt than ever before, you could you could look into that. You could um, search for that in your in your neighborhood. This is another one that's interesting because you know I think I started using C Click Fix when it first came out in mm -hmm. 2015. Yeah. But I would guess that that user base has increased. Since yes. it was first released. So it, the, the trends might reflect an increase in, in yeah. users. Though I, I'm not sure. I, I mean, I, I'm happy to hear that you use it. I hope, I would love more people to use it because it is used both, um, you know, its primary use is for the city to respond and fix problems with the city. Um, but it's also useful in my job to understand what's happening across the city and using that data to inform policy. Yeah. I mean, that would be interesting to know 
That would be another level of data that maybe is here. How many users are on C-Quick Fix and where are they located? Yeah, we don't uh, we don't have a ton of data on that because most users are anonymous on C Quick Fix. Yeah. Um, so we don't know exactly who is is. Meaning you could publish. You could have multiple. You could have multiple. Um, yeah, I'm not sure we know sort of individual unique users. Yeah. We do know a lot of city employees use this within their work too. Yeah. Um, so that makes up some of the user base. I mean, it's interesting just anecdotally. It's not like I used it a ton, but I used to look at it, and I've oh, yeah. noticed that the city's response has um, been much more uh, perfunctory. Or, uh -huh. um, and I think you know, there's there could be an an exhaustion, like the excitement of this cool app, and we can interact to like. Okay, all right already. I know about the pothole. All right. Yes, we're I do think there are best. there are plenty of duplicate requests where lots yeah. of people respond to the same yeah. the same issue. Yeah. So interesting. Um, well, I think we are way past time at this point okay. and I really appreciate you coming in. There's so many other questions and I think probably a big one is what's the sort of overall cost to the city to keep maintaining um, data sets like this or to require them or you know, but it sounds like um, we have enough to talk about in another program. Okay. Nancy, do you find this work interesting and yeah. stimulating? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's really fun. I mean, I, I love making the dashboards and building these visuals and um, it's, and it, like I said before, it's great to hear when other people are using it. Um, and I encourage people to go and check it out. Yeah. And so that's, we found it easily by just typing in BTV Data Hub into yes. Google. You can also find it at data.burlingtonbt.gov, and it'll take you there. Data.burlingtonbt.gov. We'll probably yes. put that up there for you. OK, great. Well, um, thank you all for tuning in, and I hope this was helpful and interesting to you and informative. Um, Town Meeting TV, I'm Megan O'Rourke. Thanks for watching.